you. Hey, folks, one of the Redneck Country podcasts. You are on with Real Redneck Tom Millard. And, of course, we've got the almost guy, Real Redneck Bill Tom. Bill, are you there? I'm here, and it is a beautiful night for a podcast. Beautiful night for a podcast. And sitting beside me is, of course, Patriarch of Redneck Country. My father, Real Redneck Tom Millard. Dad, is your mic hot? It's hot. I'm here. I walked over. Beautiful night for a walk. And, Bill, Todd Cook tonight. And, no. Yeah. And You're was, stealing my thunder. I was waiting for the, what did well, you do this week, I, I, Todd? You know, there was a couple of mouthfuls left, and he says, try that. And I got to tell you, it was darn good. Yeah. Was, it, was it like a boxed meal, or oh. what did you do? Well. Hey, you know what I did? I did see. I saw that you... You don't cook. You buy from this. What's it called? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I prepared and cooked. It's just, it, it, you get a recipe. So yes, I bought my wife a sweater from a very prominent company. So it's a very expensive, mm-hmm. a roots, a root sweater. And yes. uh, so it's a very prominent company. With that, I got a $90 gift card. For one of these, like a, a go fresh kind of food delivery service where you go on and you say, OK, I want like three meals, three day or two meals per day or one meal per day for three days this week. And you pick your meals. And so I thought, hey, I've never done it because Jen goes grocery shopping. I <laughs> as much as I'm going to sound like a Neanderthal. I just don't do that because my wife likes to do that. So and she I'm not says, allowed to go grocery shopping, to be honest with you. So I, I understand. You're not I allowed to go grocery shopping. I'm not allowed. How come? No, no. I went uh, I went grocery shopping once for because you think uh, four four ninety five for a bushel of bananas is cheap. No, well, okay, no, my mistake. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I went out for a uh, uh, for a loaf of bread and it cost me one hundred fifteen dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I was hungry. I saw a bunch of stuff I thought I needed. Yeah, I think that's like one hundred and one is never go when you're hungry, <laughs> no matter oh, who yeah. you are. I, there was steaks and this and that, and I, from oh, then, I I'm, guess I'm yeah, the go. almost guy's got to buy his meat, eh, Dan? Well. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, leave, uh, I leave my wife a list. I, things that I need or I'm out, I like coffee. And stuff I like leave that, my wife a apples. list. Apples. I leave a list of <laughs> things that I'd like. So she does the shopping. But if she says to me, you want to shop this week? Sure, I'll be right up. I'll go down to the freezer. Well, that ended up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mom, mom likes to shop because that's what gets her out of the house. So, yeah. but yeah, no, no, no. So I don't, as much as in Neanderthal as it sounds, I don't. I, I, you're going to get a whole lot of insight here. I don't cook. I, when we were just first married, I thought I'd surprise my wife and my wife is, is a really good cook. So wh- why, why ruin something that's so good? So I yeah. thought, I'm going to surprise her and I'm going to make, I'm going to make dinner. And so she, she called me whatever. I'm on my way home. Okay, great. So I started cooking the grilled cheese and I realized it was done way before she got home. So I wrapped it in a towel and then when I seen her pulling the laneway, I quickly threw it in the microwave. And that was the last time I had to cook. So I do grill barbecue because I am the grill master, Bill. I have a mug. Oh, yeah. That yeah. Says so. You got a mug. Yeah. So it. I do grill, but I don't cook. And I use I can, quotes. All I, I can picture in my mind when you tell me the story about you cooking is, is Mrs. Doubtfire when, oh, you know, the kitchen's on fire, pots are going all over the place. And all of a sudden he just picks up the phone and dials. Uh, local whatever <laughs> deliver me a meal type thing and actually that's what you did you ordered something in a box no no no, 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 no hold cooking. on hold on so <laughs> like, i don't get uh, first I of all credit for that too no respectful <laughs> redneck ever even utters the the words mrs doubtfire for for the record <laughs> but i understand if you're drinking tea it may slip out and now with that said, the one right here, my yeah, book, there's no doubt in my mind, girlfriend. <laughs> so with that said, <laughs> I got the gift card for a, it, it's a fresh food delivery. It is not a prepared meal. It is fresh food. Now, the benefit is you get the recipe and you get every bit of ingredients you need. I mean, right down to the spices and like the balsamic vinegar and the mustard and packets and whatever you need. And so you pick what so. My kids being seven and 13 are, are kids and like chicken nuggets and fries. So we didn't, I didn't use it on them. I said to my wife and my wife is fairly picky, like meat and potatoes kind of eating, not high fluting restaurant type or this free range, fresh food bull crap 
sorry, but that you see, <laughs> right? So it's like, I will go put a, a venison steak or a roast on the barbecue. She will take care of either rice and carrots or like peas or, and, and potatoes. That's our meals. Typically that's it. Or boneless, skinless chicken. That's our meals. So this is when you look at the picture, she's like, no, because this is like all of the menus are, are made. I'm like, OK, but it's marketing for them. They need to cater to the mass audience. So they need to make it look like five star restaurant meals in the pictures. You know, it's not really going to look like that. It's going to be like a burger's a burger. Well, let me tell you that the box I got, it came with everything. And oh, no. I mean, I've got I was cooking with Jen. What was that sprig of? Rosemary, Bill. A sprig you know, of a rosemary. This is the first time you've ever heard the word rosemary in a cooking uh, context. What was that? Sorry. This is the first first time you've ever heard the word rosemary <laughs> in the cooking context. Well, unless, unless Ron Underhill's dad's old hunting buddy's wife, Rosemary, was cooking supper. <laughs> then yes, absolutely, it is. <laughs> Oh, Todd. <laughs> so, oh, but Todd. I got it and I pulled it out and I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, it smells amazing. And so Avery seven comes over and goes, that smells like my body wash. And I'm like, it absolutely does. So, but it I looked, was here that afternoon when he opened the box, he says, dad, smell this. I'm going to cook with it. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it looks like a pine branch. I mean, like a, like a pine twig. I'm like, this is like the cool. I'm cooking with, like, I make fun of these. You go to these fancy restaurants, you get a salad. It looks like they ran outside. They picked a whole bunch of weeds and stuck it in a bowl. Like, this is the cheapest That's salad ever. That they charged you That's the most arugula. money. Okay, stop talking, Bill. You are not helping your case. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you what arugula is, but I can tell you, they put it in salads and it tastes it terrible. Comes, it comes terrible. out of Chicago. Board. Is that the stuff? That yeah, looks like- I got a charcuterie board. <laughs> There's no doubt in my Is that mind. The stuff that looks like dandelion greens. Yeah, it, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So you do know what arugula is. Anyway, that's what it was called. I thought it really was dandelion leaves. <laughs> they, they, hey, they taste good in those fancy restaurants. I always just figured it was because you just paid thirty bucks for a salad. But regardless, and 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 besides that, who orders a salad anyway? So. I get this box open and I'm looking and I'm like, wow. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to cook these in order of what I think would be the least desirable to the most for the next three nights. Cause it's fresh. I mean, and it's the coolest thing. Cause in the bottom of the box is these giant ice packs to keep everything cold. You get like bags with meal one, meal two, meal three and everything. I mean, buns and, and everything that you need to prepare this meal. And then the Does meat it come with an instruction booklet or Absolutely. Like my kids and so for the first time I've read in an instruction book. And so that is the only time I would almost put a little tear in my man card is I actually read these instructions, but it's because well, I'm, hold I'm on. out of your my realm. Is, is I'm out done. of my realm. If you're building food out of a box <laughs> that you ordered offline, this is high end you stuff. Can't clean. This is this was fancy. This was it's not yeah. wine in a box. It's food. I mean, it's fresh food, and it was like you, were, you, you have were to pick your delivery to wine date. from a box. So, <laughs> I, I know where you're coming from, Bill. He raves about my dressing. It's never measured. Never measured. It's a by, by dressing. Bread. He means you know, stuffing in a turkey, and it yeah. is. It's amazing. It's stuff, you know, and it's never the same twice. It's never the same bread twice, but it's always you know you just do it. He's getting older. Every now and then you get a little sage shot, but aside from that, it, it is the best. It is the best uh, uh, dressing on the planet. But regardless, so I get all this out and I'm looking and I'm like, okay, I'm going to cut. Well, let me tell you, last night was pork hamburger, which I'm not a huge fan. Like I will eat, but mom and dad killed pork chops when I was a kid. I told Jen, do not buy pork chops and you go to the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, honestly, my parents did too. I don't, my mom could cook anything in the world. And if she's listening to this, I'll, I'll get slapped next to oh, Hey, she year, can but- hate you with me. <laughs> Yeah, like I don't know what you, she can cook anything in the world, but pork chops turn out like shoe leather. <laughs> Love I don't, you, I don't Mrs. Know Tom. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they, they're either with a cream of gr- uh, mushroom soup. Yeah, so it's poured on them because that hides them. On the, on the, there you go. I don't know what it is about pork chops. And when I was a kid, but it was either a dried shoe leather with cream of mushroom soup or cre- cream of turkey. I don't know whatever <laughs> soup on it, but they were terrible. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> See, for me, it was either a TV dinner or a pork chop. So the Salisbury steak TV dinners, though, I tell you what, those powdered potatoes, I'm still a little partial to them. But regardless, so I've got all this and the pork burgers and that. But I'm telling you, I am now chopping a sprig of rosemary. 
and I need a quarter to, or no, a half a tablespoon of a sprig of rosemary. So I was having a good time uh, adventuring down this path. And so I made, let me tell you something with apple. I took an apple and I grated half of an apple, grated it like you grate cheese. I grated an apple and then I mixed that a little bit of a, a dollop of mustard with some of this sprig of rosemary in with the pork burger. Let me tell you what. That was one of the best freaking burgers I have ever had. My wife is looking at me right now. Like, I swear her eyes are like, when are you cooking that again? She's you can buy another right? box because there's no way you could duplicate that on your own. Well, okay, so hear, hear me out. You, so tonight. You, you didn't hear that cackle as she took her tea upstairs. <laughs> yeah, she, she took her tea upstairs, Bill. No set. So t- right. tonight was a, was a uh, pasta bake. And so had spinach in it and all kinds of stuff. And tomorrow night, I don't want to say it because it's going to be a surprise for Jen, but it is going to be, she loves chicken. It's like boneless, skinless chicken. It's like my parents killed pork chops. She kills boneless, skinless chicken. So tomorrow, but tomorrow night is baked chicken, so you got another rice box. and carrots. I got, well, I ordered three meals, right? So it all comes in that so, one box for three days, <laughs> fresh food. So yeah, I'm pumped for tomorrow night. And, and you prepare them in a half an hour. Now, Am I going to keep up my subscription? Probably not, because it is not inexpensive. Like, I got the card, and that's what I use. However, now I have those recipes, and now I know. Why was the pasta so good tonight with the hamburger, like the bake that it was? Well, I think, I said, is this because it's maybe quality products, like like really expensive type of products, or, or like a higher level of food quality that I'm using ingredients? And Jen believes it's because I make, instead of grabbing like a jar of tomato sauce and adding or a jar of rosé sauce or whatever you want to call it and throwing it in your pasta bake, you're making the, the actual sauce. So you've got the tomatoes and then you get whatever else other crap, the uh, what I Philadelphia cream cheese and you mix it together and you make your own rosé sauce. And so that adds that you, extra you level of fishery. Flavor lost the ability to uh, chirp with the passion you're speaking about uh, about cream cheese and and uh, rosemary and Dude, sprigs my of taste dollops. buds are on fire right now it was an hour ago and i'm still you, flying you gotta you, hear you've Bill. Lost she, it. she just came back and looked down through the, from the kitchen down in through his studio here <laughs> And she's shaking her head with a smirk, but, but she's excited because she doesn't have to come home and cork. So <laughs> well, that's what she, she's not going to say. A she thing. she did she did say that earlier to my daughter. She's like, might be worth the extra money if he's going to cook every night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. so that's been well, my week. I've been yeah, I'm pumped, man. It's more night. Got one more meal to do. So hey, yeah, that's good. I just saw you guys to do some. Uh, Getting back into shape type stuff too, because I mean I'm round. Now. New year, new year. I, you know what? Rounds. Yeah, your rounds are shape. It's good. So I mean, I, I went to uh, to try to <laughs> to weigh myself on my scale, only to remember that I took the batteries out of the scale to put in my crossbow scope because they ran out, so I could go deer hunting. <laughs> priorities, so, priorities. <laughs> well, I had the priority. I wasn't really worried about the scale at the time. I needed the lights on my crossbow scope. So <laughs> that I sounds like it. something I would do. Something you, you would do would have uh, like a stack of batteries ready to go. You know what, Bill? Yeah. All the all the all the garbage he gives you about drinking tea and all that stuff. You are a redneck. That is taking the batteries from <laughs> Hold the, on. the TV remote so you can light up your it, scope. No, no, it like wasn't that. a TV it remote. It was the matter. scale, scale and, and it's a crossbow. <laughs> We're still not to man card uh, status, but let's keep going. That's it. <laughs> You need to chop some. I think you need to, to chop some tomatoes and arugula over there. That's that's I'm, tomorrow night's I'm, meal. You yeah, better I'm going a little it, more rugged. Advance. I'm going out to the well, pine been, trees and I'm going to bust off some branches and grab some pine free range cones. chicken running through your backyard. Yeah. No, no, that's boxed. <laughs> boxed is different. <laughs> it was yeah. free range at one point. It I'm going right, to right. cut some pine branches and some some honeysuckle branches out of the yard and, and take his sprigs branches. and replace them and see if he knows the difference. <laughs> he will not know the difference. Because I'm you. that good of a cook that I can make it taste as good. I yeah. now have, yeah. I, I now have a commanding power of spices. Julia Childs has nothing on you. I tell you right now. I don't know who but that is. And I'm I gotta proud say, to dang say, I don't know who that is. <laughs> there was a couple of, Spoonfuls of this pasta left, and it was good. I gotta tell you, see, it was, yeah, see, it was good. 
That's how I roll. Well, there you go. <laughs> Back to you, Mr. Roundy. So, 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 yeah. so you, you, to, you decided, uh, wait, can I finish the story for you? Batteries out of the yeah, scale. Absolutely. So you joined the fat class. Uh, I should have. I actually uh, <laughs> signed up for uh, Beachbody on Demand, which is my wife. She used to be a Beachbody coach. She I've seen her, this on Facebook rodeo, or so. something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it used to be a long time ago. But we, That's uh, like the we Sean T buy... deal, right? The let's go! Yeah, I know that. Type, but I don't do... I, I don't do all the, the jumping around and, and act foolish type stuff. I like to lift weights and get over and done with it in half an hour or less. So but we're going to give it a go, try to change some things and maybe drop a few pounds and make the pants fit a little bit better. These pants with elastic bands on them, I tell you, are great. Oh, dude, I'm <laughs> then living. you start to wear a belt, <laughs> no, good, no good. I've been anymore. living in pajama pants. I'm working from home. The kids I know. are homeschooling for this week, and so they're on webcam and stuff. And so I had to, this morning set up my youngest at the table with the laptop and that. And one of the mothers goes, is that your dad, Avery? And I'm like, yep. <laughs> no, I, that's the lead singer from Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> <Anyways>. <laughs> yeah, right. Retired in his pajama pants. And I'm like, um, I work from home. <laughs> I'm not going yeah. to Walmart. I swear. Yeah. You're the, you're the guy that has half an outfit from the waist up. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyway, so that's what you're doing. So you're well, going to. This is what I'm going to attempt to do, right? I mean, right on. If I cut my portion sizes down and maybe go for a few more walks instead of. Yeah, I make my son do push ups for chocolates. I might as well, you know, <laughs> do the same or something. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. See, and I just, <laughs> I joined from my, where I get my supplements. I joined a, a, a I don't even know what you want to call it. Competition, I guess. But you had to take pictures of yourself in your underwear. Uh, oh, I'm sure that was right up your alley. And send it. And well, like, I had you to, to sort through them. Right. You so then I'm like, crap. Like, which ones do I do? Do I do the one with my duck <laughs> face? Do I do it where the saucy look at the camera? Like, which? I don't know which one to use. No. So I was. I'm I, disturbed I, any which way. That any any picture. Yeah, I'm disturbed. Yeah, that's just. <laughs> you're you're welcome. Wait till you see the cover yeah. for this podcast. So that's why I'm trying <laughs> to lose weight. I don't have to eat anymore. There you go. Yeah, that's, I helped you out right there. It's yeah. bulimic. You throw up in your mouth a little bit. So community service. I uh, I, I, I hate what I can do for you. So I signed up, and I really because it, it was like a meal plan. So I worked out. It, like long before I went bull ride, like I started working out before bull ride into bull ride. And then I just never stopped. So it's been a long, I think I'm at like eight years or nine years or 10 years or something solid. I can't remember what year I started religiously every day working out. So I thought I've never done a meal plan. I've done every possible, um, what do you want to call it's called it? A diet, Supplements talk. and stuff. It's well, not, not for me plan, a- because I was like, when I did, I started with that insanity thing that the beach body deal with Sean T that you're talking about. I went down to 118 pounds which is uh, when I went into bull ride and that's what I was at. Right. I was just little, little stick guy and which, which I thought was good. So, but everybody was starting to ask me, are you sick? Like serious sick? Like, not like, do you have the flu? Like, are you sick? Like, do you have cancer? Like, why are you looking so thin? And I thought, holy crap. And it's always been tough for me to, to put on weight. So to put on muscle, you, I realized you got to eat and I've never really ate that much. Maybe cause I can't cook that good. But yeah. so I always do like the, mutant mass protein is 1300 calorie shakes. And I'll try to do a couple of those a day as well as work out and, and then eat whenever I can and yada, yada, yada. So I thought, this is great. I'm going to have a meal plan. I'm going to have a, a new workout plan because they get stale and stagnant. This is awesome. And then I'm going to be in a competition where I can win stuff. And then I realized you got to take a picture and send it in. I'm like, man, I don't want to do that. And then with the, the plan I, I chose build muscle because I'm a little bit scrawnier of a guy. Uh, not that I'll ever admit that again. And so I click on it. I got to eat seven meals a day. Holy smokes. Who's got that kind of time? Who can you can't prepare? even cook one. Yeah, right. I don't have time to get up and go and get lunch. Like today's lunch was two deer venison pepperettes because I didn't have time to prepare. I got to make set time for seven meals. I got to cook seven meals because then it's like chicken That's the worst part about and, any of this stuff. Is and I'm like, plans, no, the preparations. Yep. oh, yeah, I'm out. So I'm out. Screw that. New well, year, new me. I think the, the <laughs> best thing that you, we, we could do and I could do is just just move. Just get some activity and exercise instead of being stagnant. That's it. You know, yeah, I've been going like around and for me is, is going to be is going to be a great walk to the woods, get some fresh air, and you know, and it, we'll, we'll we'll get there. It's twenty twenty one. New new you, new me, right? 
<laughs> we'll get you a drink of coffee before February. I recommend, <laughs> I recommend wholeheartedly walking. The, the sad part of it is you guys work. You don't get the time that I do. Twice this week, I put in two 10-kilometer uh, days. I had my record is 19,000 something steps, and that's over 10 kilometers. I did that twice this week. And the more you walk, the better you feel, and you can walk even more. And it, it yeah, it's really good. The trouble is, you don't get, you guys don't get the time to do that because you know I'm talking hour long walks. <laughs> Tough. I have to, from a COVID screening standpoint, every single day I got to answer questions. And one of the questions are, are you short of breath? And I have to answer yes every day because I walked up three flights of stairs. <laughs> okay, I gotta still tell you, bro. I don't see you as an overweight dude. You're just making me laugh every time you say this. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I have to walk upstairs to do this test. Of course, I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah, I say that every day. You know what? Are you, you testing me different today? I'm still out of breath. I'm fat. What, what do you want from me? <laughs> okay, this has got off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you got a cough? Yeah, I just inhaled rosemary. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you won't cough from that. It is a it is a delight. I'm going to start uh, making my own soaps and adding that in. So good. I'm almost good afraid good. to ask this, but you know what I've been doing. We know what you've been doing, Bill. Dad, what have you been up to? Walking. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess well, if you're doing ten kilometer walks every day. Yeah, no, I do. Well, this week we've been coming over here and and. Uh, having fun with the kids while you're down here working and it's been awesome today Avery uh, she was on school online longer today than than most days and gave her a project to build a volcano out of snow and that was pretty incredible you build this volcano with a hole in the middle put a little glass tube pour in some baking baking powder or soda one or the other dump in a few drops of dish soap food coloring she chose red dump in some white vinegar and that sucker was spewing red lab all over the place. It was awesome. <laughs> she was having a blast out there building this <laughs> volcano. We were having a good time. And I got my decorations one day at a time, got the living room down, got the tree down tonight after we left here. I still got my front porch to take down. But other than that, just just I walk here, walk home a couple times a day, do walks from here, and uh, still get some stuff done at home. And then still get a chance to sit down in the evening and watch TV with the wife for a couple hours. It's just a nice time of year. Perfect. I'm gonna retire next year, Todd. I'm telling you. Right, Freedom Forty Five. Couple years, I'm coming for you. That's it. <sighs> All right. Where are we going tonight? What well, do? I've got a guy lined up that is a newer hunter and hunted with us this year. Bill, you met him because I Who's believe, that? right? He Michael came on. Oh yeah. He came on a goose hunt with us. He deer hunted with us. He is dove hunted with us. So. He, he, we talked he about this. Hunted. He's pheasant hunted. Yeah, he's done a youth pheasant hunt. So he's 15, I believe. He will probably correct me if I'm wrong when we get him on here. But uh, I think it'd be great. You, you, I believe you think it'd be great. I think it'd be good to bring him on and hear yeah. about his successes because he has. I don't want to spoil him, but he's been very successful. And this year, I think it'd be awesome to hear the journey of what went through and how he became successful so quick he's a trap shooter. i like it he's a trap shooter he's and a trap he shoots boy. trap yep he works, works at the gun, gun club. club he's one of the best trap boys i've seen and he's a pretty good wing shot he started at the gun club he went through our our clinic and uh he did some trap shooting and then he took up hunting it was awesome all right well let's let's get him on i like that idea it'd be good to talk to a new new hunter there all right i'm gonna give him a call we'll bring him in hello michael all right. Hey, Michael. We have Michael on the phone. Michael, you met Bill? Yeah. How you, you doing, Michael? Good, you? Living the dream. And we also have Dad on the phone, Michael. Oh, hey, Don. Hey, Mike. How you doing, buddy? Good, you? Good. Good, 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 good. He said good, you? Yeah, I'm very good. All right. So, Michael. Uh, we thought it'd be awesome to bring you on here because this was like your first full year of hunting, right? <clears throat> Carrying your yeah. gun, deer hunting, all that fun stuff. So we thought we would go through your year to hear your highs, your lows, your positives. I don't even yes. know where to begin because where where did you let's go with your first time that you found out you wanted to hunt? When was that? 
Yeah, I'd like to hear about uh, that. When we went dove hunting. Dove hunting? That was my first real time actually hunting. So you had gone though. So I should preface all of this with how do we know Michael? Well, yeah. and, and, and I reached out, he was busy tonight. Couldn't come on. We, we couldn't bring him back by popular demand, but he is the nephew of real redneck Scotty. Scott Goodall. So, Scott Goodall. so Scott's taken you many times over the years, turkey hunting, deer hunting, but you just had to sit there with them. Right. So, yeah. so, but kind of got in your blood, you wanted to do it. So now you've gone, you got your gun license. You got your hunter safety license. You got all ready to rock. Now you could finally hunt. So dove hunting was the first time you were apprentice. So you could come, couldn't carry your own gun, but you could use Scott's and you could use his limit. Yeah. And so that was your first one, right? That was a pretty good dove hunt. Is that the, that was between the barns dove hunt, right? Yeah. And we went out the field that one time. Oh, and that, yeah, that same field off to the, off to the edge of it. We went back out at night or the next day or something. Cause yeah, Megan went with us and you guys were, were running, grabbing doves. Yeah. yeah. So you, you had a, you had a successful hunt first, uh, first time out. Yeah. Um, yeah, Michael. I think we got our limit the first time. Oh, we did get our limit. Yeah. We shot 45 doves. It was unbelievable. We were having a blast. And I believe that hunt. Now, Michael, you can actually, we talked about this hunt on a previous podcast. I don't know what episode, but on, on a dove hunt, we did a dove hunting podcast. But you can back me up on this. that We probably let a lot of doves go trying to get dad a dove. Yeah. A- am I right? We shot at a butterfly that one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Michael, you don't have to talk so much now. <laughs> <laughs> that that just wasn't quick enough. And so you put and then you put the young gun like Michael there. I mean, when when they're coming in and he's that tenacious, it's his first hunt. Yeah, he's he's pulling the trigger before you could even blink. Oh my gosh, Scott and, and uh Todd, they are they're out picking up doves and I'm left alone between the barns with Michael and the doves are whizzing through and Michael, he's just dropping them left and right, and I'm not even getting the gun up. Tell us something about it, Michael. What were you feeling? Like, how, how did you like that? Oh, it was fun. Um, I never really, like, shot an animal before. No, I never did. So it was a good experience, and it really got me into the hunting. It was awesome. And, and that kind of yeah. hunt, for anybody getting into hunting, if you can get hooked up with somebody going dove hunting, and, and really waterfowl hunting, it kind of beats the monotony or your first hunt of deer hunting or turkey hunting. Right. And you, you'd done that up until then. So did you, ex- did you know what to expect with dove hunting? Or you're just coming along. No, not really. Cause yeah. we, you'd never even really been with your, with your uncle dove hunting. Right. Cause this was like one of our I, first big dove hunts. Yeah. So no, I, I was absolutely probably for a new hunter, the perfect hunt. Now I prelude that with you had shot the shotgun out of the gun club. A fair bit. Yeah, I shot. Yeah. And so because Scotty had kind of taken you on the line and shot and you were getting fairly proficient with a shotgun shooting trap. Right. Yeah. So then we transfer that over, hit the doves. And I mean, with dove hunting, the beauty is and why I think it's one of the better first time to do for hunting is a you can hang out and just talk. It, depending on how you set up, but where we set up, we had just a stand up blind. We were just sitting in chairs and standing up for the most part. Cause they were coming in so fast and furious. You didn't have time to sit down. And if you did, you didn't get a shot <clears throat> dad. So <laughs> for the, for, it, it's good. Cause it's fast. It's furious, but you're, you're able to stand there and talk, have a good time, tell stories, relax. There's not really any, Oh, you're going to screw this up. Cause doves, if you're in the, the right spot, yeah, if you're in the right spot, doves are dumber than fence posts, right? Like we had the decoys out there. All you got to do is get them within 30 yards and you're pulling triggers. And, and where we had our pergola with our dove decoys was like, what, 20 yards. And I mean, we were whacking yeah. them that four feet off the end of our barrels, just the way we had it set up. So it was pretty good. So, so I think that was probably one of the better things to do for a new hunter where versus a deer deer hunt, you're going to go sit in a stand and possibly not see a thing, not have any action, not do anything, but just sit there versus Did you, have camaraderie, get to pull the trigger a whack load of times, whether you hit them or not. Yeah. Like, it's just fun. How is your confidence yeah. level going into that hunt, Mike? Do you think that the, uh, the trap shooting really helped you? Like, how, what were you thinking that first hunt swinging on them doves? 
I was swimming on the doves are slightly different because they're way more fast than the trap. Like, it's different because those, they go straight, but the doves just fly everywhere. So I thought it was pretty fun. Be honest. Were you more nervous that when you missed, you knew I was going to chirp you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got to... Uh, he puts the confidence in a new hunter, doesn't he? Just, uh, you got to start with the expectations that are young. That, you know, you're going to miss, you're going to get chirped. So That's a true story, though, I think. You you were concerned I was going to chirp you, weren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's my MO. It's how I roll. Nobody's safe. Yeah. I guess the hunt, the hunt that I was able to, to enjoy... Uh, my brother came down and uh, we hunted with you, Michael, for, I guess that was your very first goose hunt, eh? Yeah, it was my first goose hunt. So how'd, how'd that go? Tell us about that. Oh, it was pretty good. Um, I was surprised I got my first band that day. Yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah. There was a banded goose came zinging in too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whacked it. That was in our, that was our afternoon. So in the morning we set up in a, in a giant cornfield, like giant cut cornfield. And I mean, it was just a successful hunt, but I was impressed. Everybody was whacking geese. I mean, we were having a good time. So now I got to ask when we were, when we got there in the morning and if you've, everybody's, anybody's listening, had listened to our previous podcast, you know, I'm a little bit, I, I could chirp, but I'm also a little bit antsy, anxious. I don't know what the term would be attitudinal on setting up decoys. <laughs> so did particular. you but particular? Thank you, Bill. Passionate and particular. Let's put the two P's together. And it. so it, really, when we got there, we had a bit of a powwow on where we were going to set up, where the wind was blowing, how we were going to put it all out. What were you thinking? It's like, what, four in the morning. We're all standing there in the dark in the in this cornfield lit by our headlights. What was going through your mind? Were you taking it all was, in or were you just along for the ride? Uh, I think I was along for the ride then. Um, I was hoping darn it with the blinds. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You helped brush. Yeah. You yeah. kind of stayed out of my fury. You got that right. <laughs> yeah. I, said, I, I thought Michael. that was the best idea. <laughs> I handled Michael a rake right off the Hummer and I says, you're mine. Get away from Todd. And I'll tell <laughs> yeah. you, I was, I was glad to have him too because I, like strapping young guy like Mike, he raked a lot of corn and uh, we had those blinds. We had them level. Didn't we, Mike? No shadows at all. Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay, it, but in my defense, to, to prelude all of the chirpability, I'm just trying to subject Mike and have him prepared for the future real world on how people... Mike, I have always said, is way too nice. <laughs> And so, <laughs> sorry, Bill, <laughs> I don't know if I want you to speak. On that. No, no, that's good. But, but he is. On. And I say this to Scotty, and I, I think I've said it to you, Mike. I said, he's just, you're just way too nice. You're just way too. Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? Can I do that? And he's just way too nice. And so I like to chirp him on that. I like to get on him a little bit. I, I want to hear. He's not looking. I want to hear your level of excitement, Mike, when you're laying in that blind anticipation here comes the first flock of geese. They're coming. They're getting closer. Like, tell us about what you what's going through your mind and how your what your feelings were. I was getting really excited. I couldn't see them. Uh, I was really excited. I didn't know what to expect. And when we sat up, uh, I couldn't find the safety on the shotgun, so I couldn't. Well, I was pressing <laughs> it, but it didn't want to go. So I'm sitting there trying to get the safety while you guys are shooting the geese. So. <laughs> so the first flock, you didn't even pull the trigger. No, I was trying to get the safety to go off. <laughs> See, new hunter woes. But you saw That's them coming it. down. You saw the geese coming down, right? Well, every time I pulled the trigger, oh. you did. <laughs> oh. You saw them coming down, right, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, so that whet your appetite for the next punch, right? Yeah, I, I got the safety working for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the, some of the things that you, you, you learn when to take the safety off and uh, when, you, when to pull the trigger and... When the birds fall, you know, it's, it's tough too it's, uh, to see uh, when everybody's shooting at the same bird and, and uh, the birds are coming in in a bunch like that and trying to pick out a bird that's close. And it, it's There's a lot of stress involved in that as a new hunter, isn't there? Yeah. Um, uh, it, yeah, it can be difficult. I'll tell you what. Any more? I was really excited for that goose hunt. Uh, I couldn't sleep the night before. I was up pretty late trying to sleep because I was excited. See, that's awesome. That's the that's the beauty of it all right there. When you have that much anticipation, it's like Christmas morning when you're heading out 
to a goose field, you know, is hot and you know, you're going to get them. See, that's the, that's the beauty of it. Did you ever think there'd be that much work and time consuming to set that spread up, get the blinds right? No, I didn't. I thought it was uh, pretty easy. I didn't realize how big of a flock we had and all that. We're how, spread, how many sorry, decoys? Yeah, I meant spread, sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of work. I make it look yeah, easy, it was, but it's a little bit of work. It's pretty cool seeing it after it was all set up when it, and we could actually see it when it wasn't just completely dark. <laughs> That's the anxiety part of it. That's when I kick <laughs> in and start having to fiddle with every freaking thing, try to figure out which decoys put out wrong, in the wrong spot, what's going to push them away. Uh, that's mm-hmm. the best part for me. Is because then I can just say, hey, Todd, that, does that look great? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I got to go change it. Hey, Todd, does this one look great? No, 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 no. I got to go change that one. And I could get, keep them going for like half an hour. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep them going. All right. I'd, I'd move a decoy and he'd move it back six inches. And oh, yeah, no, that looks better. And I'd move it back to six inches where it came from. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> 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 yeah, messing with me. That's how I keep my beach body. I had to keep getting up, yeah. moving the decoys back. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, did you get out on a turkey hunt this year too, or or did you you miss that one this year? I didn't make it out to a turkey hunt. Yeah, what else did you get to hunt this year then? Uh, geese uh, and deer mostly, I believe. Um, let's talk about the deer, Michael, because <laughs> let's let's go over. So let's first go. Okay, aside from everything. What was your most favorite? Because I know where we're going. I think I know you well enough that I can almost predict your answers and I can guide where this podcast is going. What was your most memorable hunt? November 5th. Tell um, us about it. Walk us through year. this. Why was November 5th your first? Now, I'm talking, like, I want you to set the whole scene. Like, ah, you know, it was a nice, crisp, calm morning. The temperature was around <laughs> two degrees Celsius. When okay, Todd go. tells a story, it takes a while. <laughs> yeah. so I, I want you to, to channel your inner Todd here and see if you can, <laughs> and, can and, walk the, the, the listeners through what, uh, what yeah. the and, hunt was. And don't be afraid well, to chirp Todd a bit because I want to interject here. Like in the trap field, Michael gives it as good as he gets. Like Michael knows he's going to get chirped and he knows that Todd's going to be on his case. But I've seen Michael torment Todd terribly out of trap shoot he'll tie his shoelaces See? together with all without todd knowing it all this stuff so you know michael's in there he's down for this so be candid mike just just spell it see so it's just it's just back it up that it's well-deserved chirping <laughs> i'm justified in my chirping but no go I ahead michael this. so tell us that day what if that was your most memorable hunt and go so we got there and we were walking and we got up to our tree stand and we're sitting there and Uncle Scott told me, we got to be quiet now because the deer are going to start walking. And it was just, just getting blue, light, right? Like, it was pitch black when you first went Yeah, in. pitch black. And then like five seconds later, I go, there's a deer stand right there. It was like pretty early. I don't remember what time. But, but I think the first 15 or 20 minutes of sunlight around 7, 30, uh, maybe 7.15, we saw the first doe uh, run by, and this coyote, like the biggest coyote I've seen, comes running through chasing the doe. And then, so we call it, and the doe comes back. And then I was sitting there, and next you know, I just you called the, you called what you call what you use to call a bleat. You're using the bleat. Yeah. Right. Oh. And I see the headgear of a buck coming in, and I was like, big buck, big buck. I probably said it way too loud than I was supposed to. <laughs> I'm pointing everything because it's okay, my first stop time. Stop right like, there. Getting- when you seen it and you're saying that, so you said, probably said it way too loud because you were way too excited. So be honest, Was how much was your heart pounding? Were you like shaking? Was it like? <laughs> well, I was shaking bad. It was, I didn't shake as bad as after I shot him though. So he was walking and Uncle Scott was looking for well, we saw him, so we called him, and he stepped out of the brush, but I couldn't see him, so I thought he left, so I was disappointed, but then I saw his headgear going through and going through. Scott was saying, okay, wait, when you got a good shot, take pull the trigger, and Scott said, I barely got out. When you got a good shot, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was, I was shaking then. I called my dad, and I called my mom. Did it take uh, off? How far did it go? Yeah, it took off. Um, not too far. I think when I came I down, it was laying. Now it was, you guys are hunting in the woods. You're probably 80 yards off the edge of the woods and 80 yards from the bottom of a, of a massive hill. 
like you're down in the valley where I shot my woodcock, where we talked about it down in that, in that, in that valley with a creek running through it. But down the far side of the valley, it goes back up and you guys are closer to that, that ridge. I call it a ridge. It's probably a hundred yards up and you guys were at the bottom of that, but probably 80 yards from the edge of that hill and then 80 yards from the, the meadow field that's out there. So you were right in the middle of the woods. And when I came, uh, to to find you guys where I thought I was going to have to start tracking that buck laid dead on the edge of that field so it probably only went about 80 yards did you guys have to drag it to the edge or was that where it oh yeah we had to drag it a little bit so it didn't quite go 80 yards so you you textbook shot it right yeah I was and while we're waiting I was shaking and I was so excited only problem is I'm colorblind so I couldn't see the blood on the leaves but Uncle Scott said there was a lot would but, you, it, I, you know, I often try to figure out if it would be the perfect blood trail. And so <laughs> I, I, without Scott on here and you being colorblind, I guess we'll just have to take your word for it. It's probably the perfect, it, it could have been because it, it got a new hunter. Bill, and we have yeah, well, the perfect yeah. blood yeah, trail yeah, so for a new hunter. Blood- all right. Yeah, but unfortunately, we've got to come up with a different uh, uh, idea for Michael, who's colorblind. So I, I want to talk about this colorblind for, for one second with Michael, uh, like, and then I want to let you go ahead, Bill, because I don't think Michael's, when he says colorblind, he's like me. It's not that you don't see red and yellow or not. It's you don't see red against green or brown, correct? Yeah. Yeah, because and, you know I found out I was like that in high school. My science teacher gave us a test, and I couldn't see certain colored numbers on certain colored backgrounds and that amazed me and i cannot follow a blood trail it's just it eludes me so that's what you're saying right mike hmm. you just that red just doesn't yeah. jump out at you okay bill sorry i, I interrupted on, like, you what were you going to say well i was just going to say that we needed to figure out a way to get a textbook blood trail for somebody who doesn't see the contrast between the two of them and i haven't figured that out yet so no, it's not on a white guess. snow yeah uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that would be the right way to do it. <laughs> Get some white snow, but CSI textbook. I'm sure it was Michael with the the, the shot. And, and where did you end up hitting this deer? That it didn't go that far. I double lunged them. No, but see, they won't go that far if you double lunged them. That's for sure. Yeah. No, sir. All right. So yeah. you're shaking. You're you're excited. You're, Calls you're, everybody and their uncle. Yeah, and before you even found the deer, right? You called before you even found the deer. Called yeah, I called. I said. Well, I hit a deer. I didn't say I found it, but I said I just shot at a deer. Now we just got to go track it. And so um, we're walking, and I'm following Uncle Scott. I could see where the where his footprints were. And we're, um, we're walking, and there's one where it looked pretty good. And then I look up, and I just see – well, me and Uncle Scott see the white belly. I'm freaking out. Well, not freaking out. I'm just super excited. I go and hug him. I go over to him, and I'm so excited. I'm shaking even more. I go. I, I wasn't going to check if it was dead. That was a big mistake on me. So I was going, Uncle Scott's like, wait, wait, wait you got to make sure it's dead. So he goes and <laughs> gives it a little tap and it's dead. And I'm, I was just so excited. That was my first ever deer and my first ever buck at the same time. Spoiled. That's I awesome. say spoiled. Yeah. But I will Sounds prelude like- that with there was a lot of work into getting Michael to that point, I believe. Cause your uncle Scott took you out. Cause I know we went to the gun club, shot that black powder gun and got her dialed in for you over and over and over. Right. Yeah. And, and put some work into it. You had hunted with Scott and sat with him year after year, not being able to carry a gun, not being able like legally even allowed to touch the gun. So you would just go sit with him and hang out with him. And so you had learned over time from, from hanging out with your uncle on we had to do it, where to go, where to go, where to aim, because he'd, he'd show you all this stuff, right? So if you're a new yeah. hunter, that's the crash course that you really got to take on is if it's black powder, you got to get out and shoot. If it's bow, you got to shoot. You got to make sure it's shooting where you are. And that's number one. Number two is then you got to learn where to shoot it. And so you knew right behind the shoulder. That's, I think your uncle just beat that into you right behind the shoulder. Yeah, right behind the shoulder. Because I think every every time you pull the trigger, I, I would even at the gun club, I believe Scott was saying that's like you got to make sure you're aiming in the same spot. And when you do that on a deer, it's right behind the shoulder. And so all yeah. that was like beat in that you knew because that excitement when that buck shows up for somebody that's not had it is overwhelming. Am I right? Was it hard for you to keep your faculties to keep your head straight? to get the gun lined up to make sure it was on its shoulder 
it, like it's still and concentrate and make sure you put the shot where you needed to. Yeah. I just remember I couldn't see him and I saw his headgear. So I put it down where I thought his leg would be and we walked out and I could see everything. I put it right behind his shoulder and I pulled the trigger. And then Uncle Scott said he jumped up and like did a whole bunch of stuff. But before I shot him, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Before I shot him, he was scraping and like making scrapes in the ground and everything. And then he peed in the scrape and all that before I actually did shoot him. So you got to see all that too, which is awesome. Yeah. So, and I, I think with the goose hunt and the safety being on and that for me, even, even today, the first goose hunt of the season, cause I haven't got to hunt them all year. And now we've got a field, we got hundreds coming in, maybe a thousand coming in. We just spent three hours doing our, our layout and brushing in the blinds and everything. And when that first flock comes in, I know I've really got to concentrate because I used to pull that trigger so fast three times in a row shooting at a flock and they've not hit a one and they'd fly away. And dad go, well, where were you aiming? Which goose were you aiming at? I, I don't even know because it was just, and I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like they say buck fever, goose fever is, is real to me because I'm just as excited when a flock of geese comes in that first goose hunt of the year that, yeah, you gotta, it, it, you gotta, I gotta make myself slow down and really focus and concentrate. And so you've got to do all of that leading up to that hunt so that it's almost second nature for you because buck fever is all too real. And man, it's just intense. You forget one little thing and you're going to miss that buck. I remember after I shot him, I kept on playing over where I put the crosshairs, where I pulled the, like when I pulled the trigger and just, I kept on playing that over and over in my head, making sure I got the right shot and everything. And so when we walked down, I saw him. I was just glad that I did. <laughs> you awesome. start to second guess yourself. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that was, because, uh, that was the, the high of the highs. Did, did you have any lows? Let's talk, let's talk about the lows of the lows, I, Michael. I, I, would, I would like <laughs> to hear about the lows. <laughs> Me too. Um, I remember one time, I think we were just in the moving tree stands or something. But we went out and I walked, we walked all the way to a tree stand. And I was walking up the tree stand. All of a sudden I just see we had a, just, a we string had, on my crossbow. Just <laughs> and so we had just finished moving tree stands. And so we had in the, in the, what I would call the David Suzuki woods. If you've listened to our last podcast. So we were moving tree stands and because we had hunted a little bit bow and this is before the black powder. This was it bow season. And so we had hunted a little bit, but we realized, okay, we got to move a few tree stands here and there because they're just out of range or we know they're walking here. Let's get them done. Let's just bite the bullet and do it. We don't like to do that during season, but where we have them today is the, the, the land been logged a little bit and it kind of moved their, the deer runs a bit and just put them out of range. So we've got to move. We got to, or we're not going to, we're just going to watch deer this year. We're not going to shoot deer. So we got to go move the tree stands. So we went in, we moved them all and we're like, okay, we don't want to hunt here. Cause we just spent three hours driving our golf cart through the woods, moving three tree stands and putting up a tent. We like, forget it. There's not going to be a thing left in this bush. Let's go to the other one. But by the time we got done, it was so late. And Scott says, well, we're already here. Like we're going to be another half hour driving to the other woods, getting ready, then walking in to be able to hunt like an hour. Why don't we just go see what we got? So, all right. So we went and so then we split three different ways. And so Michael, you go to your tree stand and yeah. you can take it from that way climbing up and my string snap. So, um, it takes some, cut my, uh, my string snap. So I'm just going to sit here until you guys are done. And not even 15 minutes later, a big doe and a little button buck come walking out. The doe's probably like, 15 to 20 yards from me and the button bugs not even four, uh, eight yards away from my thing. <laughs> I'm just sitting there. I could have had well, a deer. We could have been dragging out a deer. You could have had your first deer. In full disclosure, you- <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> Cause I'm on the tech string and I'm, and I'm like, Michael's his, his crossbow string snap. Uh, crap. Like what, what are we going to do? Like we got to, uh, do we, do we leave? And Scott's like, well, no, this is this is a good lesson for him to learn that I, the crap happens in the woods and we're we're going to stick it out. It's only going to be an hour and a half. And what are the odds we're going to see something anyway? All right. It wasn't 15 minutes and he's got a doe and a button buck within range of him. And all he can do I'm is video. I'm glad that that happened, though. So you kept your tag for the big buck. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. 
So well, that's a, like we said. What we said before: the three ways people learn best is physical, financial, or emotional pain. And I do believe you you experienced a lot of emotional pain the second your crossbow string snapped going up your tree stand. Yeah, I was pretty disappointed. I was pretty frustrated once I saw. Well, not frustrated, but very disappointed when I saw the deers walking by, <laughs> and I knew I could have probably got one today. Well, that day. Did you, uh, did you put your crossbow up and try to make uh, make the shot in your mind, even though that uh, you, you couldn't make it in reality? I didn't even think of doing that. I was took pictures of him, to be honest with you. He videoed him, <laughs> yeah. took pictures, sent them Some, to us. Sometimes those are good learning experiences well, to see how much movement you could get away with or how much you could, you know, where to pick a spot and practice putting the good crossbow, answer. the hairs on uh, on the, the right spot. How often do you get That's- live practice? You're right, Bill. Yeah. I was home that day. Well, I was helping to move, but I didn't stay for the hunt. I went home, and it wasn't very long later, and I'm getting video and pictures from Michael, and I felt his pain. I could, <laughs> like in his comments on the pictures, I thought, oh, Michael. <laughs> he, he was disappointed. But that's exactly what Scott said. It's a good learning lesson. You know now when you're going upstairs with – with nails and crap in it, because these some of these tree stands, right? They're 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 a little rough on the stairs and stuff. It's they're they're redneck. But going up into the tree stand, you you protect your bowstring, you protect your gear. Yeah. You know, it was a learning That's lesson. That's your money maker. Yeah, and you do not put a bolt in that crossbow until you're sat down. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Which no. which he didn't, which is good. So it was, it was all the it was all the good positive things. But you're right, Bill. How often yeah. would you get to have a live target? I, I'll I'll do that on animals. I'm not. I know I'm not going to shoot. Like when I'll have does come in and I'm buck hunting early in the season and see what I get away with, but not movement. Yeah. I do it with calls, right? But that's good. Like that's you could right. kind of judge how the, if that tree stands sitting there, it's not a climber. It's going to be there year round. Now you'll know when the big boy does come in, how much movement can you get away with? Right, and you can even uh, I've even had it where I practice putting the bull up and. You know, you hit the, hit the limb on the tree. Oh, you know what? Now I got to, it just gets your mind in, in muscle memory and the motions of oh, what you need to do so that I've when never, the activity yeah. happens. I've never thought of that. You got to watch those limbs on that crossbow thing because they're like hanging yeah. out there. Like a well, I tell you what, Michael, I, I don't mirrors. know. If you put that limb too close to a, a tree in front of you and you pull the trigger, that sucker will punch you in the eye every single time. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah. Are you speaking from experience, uh, Bill? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I was deer hunting. I'll tell you a quick little story. I was deer hunting uh, back in the house here. and I hunt in a spot where there's three trees that are pretty close to one another. And I put the, the climber up in one tree and then in front of my, my tree is where I hang the bull off of. And uh, I get into the hunt, the deer hunt, and probably about half an hour into the hunt, a big coyote shows up at 40 yards. And I'm thinking, no deer, coyote in the area. I'm going to take a shot at this 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 uh, this coyote. And I take the the the, the crossbow off the uh, the um, the bow holder, and I put up on this cro- uh, this coyote and put the 40 yard pin on, and I pull the trigger and crack. I, the limb, when it came forward, it was too close to the tree in front of me, and that limb bounced off the tree, and that crossbow uh, scope hit me directly in the eye. I was stunned. I had no idea what happened, and that coyote is standing there at 40 yards looking at me like, hey, what are you doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it stood there for another 20 seconds while I thought about life and contemplated, you know, reloading the crossbow, but no, I never found the arrow, and the the mark that came out of the tree was probably a, a one inch square chunk where the crossbow limb hit the tree right in front of me. So, and your crossbow good lived? lesson learned. It lived another it was, day. It did. It's an Excalibur. You can't break an Excalibur. That's what I hear, but I don't know. Yeah, I I use my this, little I Excalibur use a, a too. Real, real bow. Uh, uh, no, the, yeah. day, the day you got the your first buck, Mike. Um, we get the phone call. We get the we get the text. Michael's got a uh, a nice buck down. So uh, we head right for the barn at the farm, and and we want to see Mike's deer and, and get pictures with him and everything. And you're already there with the deer, and and uh, it's lunchtime, and the, the boys tell me by the time I got there, and uh, we started having lunch, you kept getting up and and going out and look at your deer and come back in, which you're excited to do. You just can't see it enough, right? Yeah. So how many points did it have? Uh, I believe five. Nice. nice well, yeah, I had five. 
Nice five point. But it was a good, it was a good size five. It was a good size. But good size. You got it mounted now, right? Yeah, well, that was where uh, I was going. Like yeah. I said to you, I said to Mike, we're taking pictures. I said, okay, so what's happening here? You you cutting the rack off or what's happening? And the decision had already been made to mount it. Tell us how that came about. I thought, already? You're going to mount it? Like, like that decision um, was made. How did that come about? Well, I was just, I was looking at my deer and Uncle Scott told me, by the way, your mom said you can mount it. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Scott already I already had it all really, arranged. I was pretty surprised about that. Oh, so they surprised uh, you with that, eh? You could get your first deer done. So you're waiting to get it back, right? Right to this time. You're yeah. Right? Yeah. You haven't got it back yet? You want me to make a call? Did you tell him to get, give you the Todd Millard discount? No. Uh, Don went in <laughs> with it. Yeah, I told him that. He laughed. Oh, okay. yeah. it's gonna cost you an extra three hundred. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah, and you won't get it for two years. Now we, he knows you know me. We took it in, and I and I and I told Dave. I said, "Oh, by the way, Todd says give Michael the 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 Todd Millard discount." And of course, uh, you know the reaction from Dave. Like he he hawed and laughed and danced around a little bit. And, and I said, "Okay, have have pity on Mike. Don't hold don't hold Todd against Michael here." <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but you just you just moved too, didn't you, Mike? Are you moved now? Yeah. Um, on the twenty fifth, we're moving. So you haven't moved yet. So you got a. And I understand that you're getting a new bedroom and the whole bit in the new house. You got a you got a wall picked out yet? Yeah, I was gonna do right above my bed, but then I was thinking, what if it falls down in the middle of the night and falls right on top of me? That could be bad. So I'm gonna put it on the wall right across my bed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I love it. I love it's it. Confidence in your hanging skills. Yeah. No, gonna make a good husband yeah. someday. But it, you're still enjoying this. You're still enjoying this hunt, though, because now you're thinking of where it's gonna be and your, your brand new house and. And a new bedroom, and it's near thick as where you're still enjoying all this, right? Still exciting for you. Yeah. The biggest question is are you going to hunt this year? Oh, yeah. Are you ready to hunt this year? Yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff for Christmas for hunting, so I'm ready. Oh, you're ready to rock. Are, are you turkey? Hunting? Yeah. Yeah, I got the turkey call and all that for Christmas. Ready to go. So now you've been bit by the bug. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Just, uh, we couldn't have a Christmas Eve open house this year. Last year, Mike and his mom dropped in and and we had a great visit and some deep. And this year, we we didn't have couldn't have it COVID. And uh, but I get I got some texts and some cards from Mike and Merry Christmas and all that stuff. And you know, thanks for uh, for allowing the hunt. And I said, Hey, Michael, you're you're in the group now. You are a part of our group now. What that feel? Whoa, whoa, like? whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't condone this oh, yet. I did. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm getting trumped here. Um, yeah. I remember one time when we were hunting, you were pretty close to me, and you kept on rattling the your antlers, and I was like, I texted you. <laughs> so you texted me, is that you? I was like, no. And so I was getting excited and excited. We go out to the field, and I was like, are you sure that wasn't you? And he's like, yeah, it was me. <laughs> so. I had him going for a while. I bet you it was a good 45 minutes. I even had Scotty, because Scotty was between us, right? And Scott's like, are you playing with Michael? I'm like, what are you talking about? Did you hear that deer too? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, I look because I, I had to text you to say, Mike, I'm going to call you. Are you willing to come on the podcast? And those were, I think, our was our almost our last conversation was that that little combo. And I yeah, I forgot about it until reading it the, today when I texted you. But I thought, hey, that's pretty funny. I still remember that. I think it went on for a good 40 minutes. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was rattling. Yeah, my like, hopes up. I was sitting there like all ready to. I'm like, did you hear then. that too? Oh, dude, it sounds like a couple tens. Like those are those are big <laughs> antlers hitting. <laughs> oh, I was. I didn't think you were that close to me. So. <laughs> okay, so tell me, Michael. You you had the social of the uh, the dove hunt. Um, you had the social. There was a bunch of us out goose hunting, and that was a great day and lots of laughs. Uh, now you did sit for an hour and a half by yourself, in in your own stand with a bow. But your first deer, your first uh, nice buck, your first deer ever, you were sitting with your uncle in a tree stand. So what's in store next year? Do you like that sitting with Scott or or you think you might venture out and pick your own spot, be in your own tree stand? What's your feelings on that? Or do you like sitting with I think I think I'm going to venture out. You can and, do it now, right? You got your full-blown license and everything. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to come back. So, so you, you don't think need next to share year you might say, no, I'm going to pick this spot or I'm going to sit in this stand or... You think you might do? Oh, that? I don't. Yeah. Cool. Did you shoot the biggest deer of the the group? Um, I don't. 
think so. Uh, I was going to say, because you could pull rank on Todd there and say, hey, look, I shot the biggest deer last year. I get my pick of spots for next year, right? <laughs> Well, you know, we got enough tree stands. Nobody's going to argue with Michael anyway. Everybody, everybody gets along pretty good. But uh, look at that. Dad's got my back. See, I'm a nice guy. It's all a facade. But, yeah, and uh, <laughs> you you were sitting in one of my favorite stands, right down in the hardwood. Yeah, uh, it bottom. is. That is no one is Dad's stand. Yeah, and and uh, that's a nice spot. You can see a lot. That's you got some clear shooting lanes too. Correct. Yeah, we really did it because it's easy walking. <laughs> Easy walk. <laughs> never right. quit. See, Michael? He's, he's always on you. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that's a crossbow? Yeah, you can go to Dad's stand. There's a wheelchair lift when you get there. Now, when you were going in in the dark, did you think you were ever going to get to the stand, or what were you thinking? I was trying just to be quiet. <laughs> so you, you didn't realize it was a long walk? He was hunting with Ninja Scotty. He had no options I was just but gonna follow say. suit. Yeah, I and, know, but and I'm just thinking, did you think like, this is a long ways in? You hope your uncle... He goes in a different way than I do, because I'm not good in the dark. So you, your your dad, your uncle goes in a different way. He goes so the quiet way. It doesn't matter which way. They both can be quiet. <laughs> what I'm saying is, did you think it was a long walk, or what were you thinking going in? I was just thinking that I might get to shoot a deer today, and I was super excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking, that oh boy. <laughs> right on. All right. Well, I'm excited for next year. We got a new blind brusher then. If you're uh, you're going to keep on hunting with us. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't your only goose hunt. You did another goose hunt with us too and helped me brush in blinds, didn't you? Um, I believe so, yeah. Yes I did. Yep. Yeah, we had another one. We uh it wasn't as successful, but we still knocked some down. It was mm-hmm. still pretty good. We only put out half the decoys, I think, because me and Scott didn't wanna didn't want to work that hard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, well, was good. Well, I appreciate you coming on, Michael. That was a uh... Good to hear about the first year hunter experiences and the, the highs and lows. I think you, you need to find yourself uh, either a, a good job or get your uncle to support you. Cause with all the, the hunting supplies that comes with being a new hunter, I tell you what, the bank account gets low pretty quick. So <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a lot of shifts at the gun club. <laughs> that's, that's it. But no, it was a pleasure hunting with you this year. And, and uh, thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you for letting me come on. Yeah, appreciate it, buddy. It was good yeah. times. I can't wait to harass you during turkey season. I think that's next up. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> He's got his own gun now. I guess I better be careful. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Great. Appreciate it. See thanks, you guys for letting me come on. And that'll do it for this week, folks, for the Redneck Country Podcast. I'm Bill, the Almost Guy Tom. And I'm Todd, and thanks for listening. And folks, if you want to be part of the podcast or you want to give us some feedback or really contact us about anything, feel free to email us at podcast at theredneckcountry.com. Again, that's podcast at theredneckcountry.com. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again next week.